finally tonight, yesterday was Earth Day with celebrations around the globe. Hari Srinivasan talked recently to a geologist who's also the host of a new film. And he's traveled the globe looking for ways human ingenuity has solved tough energy problems. Earth, the operator's manual, is a new three-hour PBS documentary that looks at different ways communities within the United States and the world are making smart energy choices based on their pocketbooks and the environment. The host of the series is Richard Alley, a professor of geoscience at Penn State University. In this clip, he tells us what ice core samples show about the Earth's temperature and carbon dioxide over time and takes an extreme leap to make a point. This is a pattern of natural variability of the climate that our planet has experienced over the past 400,000 years, as recorded in the physics and chemistry of ice cores. The regular ups and downs in temperature are the result of changes in Earth's orbit around the Sun and their subsequent effects on levels of carbon dioxide and other heat-trapping gases. You can think of this natural variation as the Ice Age roller coaster. Occasionally, we cross some sort of a tipping point, and the Earth evolves really rapidly to a new state, which is very different. Over the last 100,000 years of the Ice Age cycling, we've had a couple of dozen of these large, abrupt, widespread climate shifts. Almost as if the Earth was bungee jumping off the climate roller coaster. Richard Alley joins us now. Thanks for being with us. So why jump off a bridge to make a point? Well, we want the show to be engaging, so, something that will catch people's attention. But we want to tell the real story. Now, we humans are pushing the climate. We hope that it goes nice and smoothly and gently. But when we look at history, way back in climate history, we know that when nature pushed the climate, sometimes it was smooth and sometimes it wasn't. So when you look at those core samples, you see this fluctuation up and down. What's to say that, that, that a lot of that happened way before humans were around? So what's to say, what, what's the impact that humans are having on it? Right. So what we see from the core samples is ultimately the climate makes sense. If the sun gets brighter, it gets warmer. If you change where the sun hits the planet with the orbits, the places getting more sun tend to get warmer. If you change the CO2, raise it, it gets warmer. What the core samples show us is the climate makes sense and that our understanding is sort of working pretty well. Mm -hmm. And so then we ask, what's pushing it now? The orbits are real slow. 10,000 years from now, they will matter. Next year, no. Nah. Sun, if anything, has been dimming a little bit, but not much change. It really has been very stable and friendly to us. But we're turning that CO2 knob. So we take the understanding that works in history and apply it to the future, and we see that we're going to matter. Now, you've had an opportunity to visit several different communities around the country. For example, in Baltimore, some of the poorest folks are actually making the biggest difference and saving the most money when it comes to starting to conserve the energy that they use. But one of the questions people ask is, will changing my light bulb really make a big difference? Changing your light bulb will make a little difference for you, but it'll save you money. And if all of us change our light bulbs, it really does make a difference. And this is something that I think is really important, is that these things work for people. They're, people are enjoying it. They think they're doing the right thing, the good thing, but they're also helping themselves in the pocketbook. Now, let's take a little look at the, uh, at the producer side of the equation. Uh, you had a chance to go to China and, and, and take a look at uh, Shindoku or Shidonku energy plant there, where they have a pretty promising technology to try to clean up the CO2 that they're emitting. Let's take a look at that clip. This plant uses a process called post-combustion capture, PCC, where coal is first burned in a more or less traditional manner, and then the CO2 is captured. So Shidonku is remarkable in every way. They're capturing 150,000 tons of carbon dioxide, and they've been doing that now for about 18 months successfully. Shidonku sells the captured CO2 for use in soft drinks and chemicals, turning it into a resource. In the future, they'll scale up and begin sequestering the CO2 deep underground. Already, that means that it works and that the cost and performance are pretty well understood. So if it can be widely applied, then it creates the new benchmark that will define whether or not this works anywhere else. 
I should mention the gentleman in there is Julio Friedman from the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratories. You know, further in the documentary, it says that maybe that could work for a 20% cost increase. Do we collectively have the will to swallow that kind of pill? I think we do. I think ultimately we love the benefits we get from energy. And ultimately we're going to want a lot of energy and we're going to want energy in the way that our grandchildren and their grandchildren can have it. And so we will do what's needed in the brains, in the invention, in the implementation that will get us the energy in the best way. And by finding out what this will cost, what you can do, it lays it out for you. And now you can say, look, this is doable. We can do this. We can mine coal and we can get energy from coal, put the CO2 down, or we can do wind, or we can do sun, and we can conserve, and we can... Now you have a, a full menu that you can choose from for what works for you in your country, your invisible individual community, for yourself. How, how important is convincing governments of this? There are problems that each of us as an individual can solve. We do not need a federal monitor to make sure I wash my hands after I use the restroom. There are problems that our governments have solved with barely a problem for us. The ozone hole is going to get fixed because inventors came up with new things and the governments agreed how to implement them. This problem is energy and environment is probably big enough that it's going to take us as individuals and us working together. Richard Alley, thanks so much for joining us. And thank you.